Um, next item, order 2023-06. Um, so, Brad, where are you? Um, licensing of junkyard uh, pursuant to RSA 236. So I have got um, Murray's Auto as well as, I believe I should have SNS Metals too, right? Yes. Sir. Murray's Auto, SNS Metals. Those are the only two left. Okay. If you want to speak to both of them, Brad, that'd be great. Very good. So we're going to cover 202306 and 202307. Brad Anderson, Assistant Billing Inspector for the Town of Londonderry. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Councilman. An inspection of the subject junkyard of Murray's Auto Recycling at 55 Hall Road on June 5th, 2023, determined compliance with license conditions on preparation for renewal. The applicant continues to work with DES to maintain compliance and the recommended best management practices. During my visit, it appeared that Mr. Dudek is following proper best management practices. On occasion, I would make unannounced visits and I would find the fencing would be down and cars occasionally would be stacked higher than they should be. The problems that he was having, what he told me was the the thrasher, the shredder rather, uh, from Schnitzer, located in Everett, Massachusetts, the big machine would be breaking. So I asked him to get me a letterhead from Schnitzer with the dates when they were down and he submitted that to me. Based on the recent inspection and other revisits properly during the year, it appears the applicant is operating within the requirements of their license and renewal of the license is recommended. So let's hear about SNS metals and then I'll go to questions yeah. if that's okay. Yeah. For SNS recycling, an inspection on the junk guard was also conducted on June 5th. Determine compliance with the license conditions in preparation for renewal. The applicant continues to work with the DES to maintain compliance with the recommended best management procedures due to the nature of the junkyard. Operation is determined by DES. Mr. Salamini also operates as a metal recycling facility for the non automatic automotive metals received in this site. No adverse work conditions were observed during the inspection. It would prohibit the renewal of his license. Previous on unannounced visits to Mr. Salimi's, Salamini's junkyard, I would find the vehicles parked too close to the road and the aisleways blocked up where the fire trucks would be, have difficult time getting into it. I addressed them to Mr. Salamini and within days he had the issues fixed. Based on the recent inspection and other visits to the property during the year, it appears that the applicant is operating within the requirements of their license. Renewal of the license is recommended. Questions? Yes. Um, Brad, thank you for your presentation. Uh, a couple mm. questions. You mentioned some violations during the duration and between the last um, inspection with, or, or with your un, uh, unannounced inspections. Specifically, you mentioned uh, regarding the facility on Hall Road uh, vehicle, the issue with the fencing and the cars, and then the uh, SNS. You mentioned uh, vehicles too close to the road and fire lanes, stuff like that. Um, I did hear, I believe I heard you say regarding SNS metals that um, within a couple of days of you bringing the issue or addressing the issue, they uh, then again became compliant with the. Uh, the rules, laws, and regulations. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. And then you stated regarding the Hall Road location, uh, Murray's Auto, uh, fencing the cars, which you had stated that there was, uh, you asked for uh, sh uh, Schnitzer. Is that correct? Yes, it's Schnitzer, Schnitzer thrashing. I, I, I think they, they thrashed the cars. Yeah. They Did picked them up at the... They thrash them did, down. In did Everett. you um, did you see? Did you notice that the dates that they stated that their machine was inoperable was in concurrent with the dates that you noticed the the violations of of the rules? 
I did, and they, and they were very close. And at first, when he, they started the machine back up again, when they fixed that machine, yeah. the cars in Murray's junkyard remained piled higher than they should be. Mm -hmm. I went down and talked to Mr. Ed Dudek about that and to find out why, and he said it's because everybody is backed up. So all the people that other people that bring the cars there as well are also backed up. So it's a slower process bringing the cars through, and eventually the cars did go down, yes. And it, as of right now, it's corrected? Yes. Okay. For both locations? Yes. Okay. So in the, um, and you recommend approval for both? Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. I, just, I have a couple questions about Murray's. Yes. Um, it's a non-conforming property, correct? I'm not, I'm not sure of that, sir. Meaning that it's in a, I believe it's in a residential area and it has certain restrictions. Um, one of them is are auctions are auctions allowed to happen on that property? I do not know. Or a what? okay, auctions. auctions, auctions. I don't know because I I believe that they're not allowed, but they have been happening. Is what I'm being told. So I didn't know if you checked into that at all. Uh, I have heard of auctions. Uh, I've had complaints of auctions happy on that property i have investigated those complaints in the past i have not heard that recently but i've heard them in the past i've gone to and to, uh, to inspect that and i've had no proof no evidence there was an advertisement in the london Dairy times for an auction back in may okay, it's I was just right no i didn't know if you know nope. if that was allowed or not um our vehicles allowed to be parked overnight on the murray's auto site outside of the gate the the employees vehicles may be parked there okay what about um a box truck that was parked there from may middle of may until almost end of june middle of may the box truck it was a big box there was, truck. A it was, fire about, truck it was there about a month there was a fire truck that was there this is just in the past since may okay um i don't I, recall I, a fire truck nice. being there um, and then just to add on to that, right now there's a, a vehicle parked right now today um, outside the thing. I just don't know if that's allowed. I just want to know if that's allowed the, or not. The owner's vehicles. It's not. You know, I don't think it's an owner's vehicle, but I just was curious. How would that. anybody know whether it's the owner's vehicle or not? Just asking. I, I don't know. I'm, I, I don't know how anybody would know if it's the owner's vehicle or not. Ron, is this something you're witnessing? Yeah, I actually drove by. I had I had a resident contact me about some of these issues, and so I drove by. So you went down too. there and found the box truck. I actually have a picture of the box truck. So was and, this um, reported to the building department yeah. that it was there? I believe it was reported. I can confirm that later, but I I just didn't know. I just I was trying to get information I, as to whether or not I've never heard anything about is, a box it truck. It is or not. That's all. All right. So I'm just trying to get information as to whether or not it is or not. I understand, but if the, but if the violations are not reported, yeah. you know they there's there's no evidence of it if they're not reported. I mean, it's, you know, if, if they're violations and they're reported, he should have a log of those violations. What would be the proper way for a resident to report that to you? The, they can call the building department. Okay. They can, uh, and yeah, you can actually, you can access my extension 108. Okay. Leave a message. You can send me an email. My email is on the website. Okay. Yep. Come in, you can come into the department. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> As well, you could also fill out a formal complaint. Um, there used to be a, a thing you could do online. Is that going to come back at any time soon where you could fill out a form online and it would be mm -hmm. recorded? I don't know. Okay. Say. Thank you. Anything else? No public comment. There is. I walk. No, there is no public comment. Public comment is closed. Sir, if you do it again, I'm going to ask you to leave. Um, I, you've been told multiple times. I don't, sir, as long as I'm sitting here running this meeting, those are the rules. If you don't like it, you can leave. You can't break state law. Sir, you can leave if you're going to continue to disturb this meeting. John, there is an RSA that, that he did bring to my attention. I don't know if that impacts. I'm just... The fact we are not here. taking public comment. Okay. You, you, you want to, you can leave, sir. Do you know that there was a court that you filed with the court? Sir. Are you aware of that? Sir, you can leave, sir. No, you're, you're, what you're doing, John, is you're not doing your job. 
Sir, you're, you're out of order. Sir, you're out of order. Sir, you're out of order. No, behind you. You can't do your job. Sir, you're out of order. Please leave. Is that a problem, it, lady? No, we can't. No. Because if this goes worse, you're gonna, I'm going to sue the town. Because you're breaking RSA again and ignoring court orders where you filed with the court. I, thank you. Good night. You got a real problem, John. And they've been unlicensed for 10 days. Good night. Mr. Chairman, can I just inquire uh, of Councilor Dunn what that RSA is? Uh, yeah. Governing sure. the. Yeah, you sent that to me. <coughs> so, what do you guys want to do? You have two, two um, orders out. Make a motion that we pass them. Well, I so just Mr. want to Chair, put eyes on this. Yeah, okay, I first I, to make sure that we're not. I withtract that the motion until okay. the town manager gets what he Come needs. May, Mr. Chairman, if, if I can just take a look at that. Yeah. This is what we sent to the mayor. And who sent it to you, John? Um, Richard Belinsky. Oh, Richard Belinsky. Sent it to me earlier. I just don't want us to be in trouble for something that we need to. Yeah, 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 yeah. I trust you. Do you want to pen this and move on to your agenda, Mr. Chair? Um, he's looking at something. He'll have to pay attention if we move on. Fair enough. Aaron, we'll go into recess for five minutes. Listen. Okay, we are now back in session. Can you go over and put the horse in? Okay. All you have to do is just stand. And if you need a little enticing. Unfortunately. Uh, John. Thank you. I got to call. Can you put the yeah, horse back in the good. barn now? Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sorry about that, Johnny. And unfortunately, <laughs> due to the multiple disruptions that have been happening during our meetings and everything, when people are doing those, they're asked to leave. And, it, it, and it's a sad state of the fact that that's what has to happen sometimes when people don't want to, you know, follow the, the rules that are in place. With regards to the license, if there's anyone else who is in the room who would like to speak to either one of these licenses, we will entertain their comment. Mm -hmm. If there's not, we're going to move forward. Seeing no comments, how would you like to proceed? I will motion to approve both licenses as the town inspector has now found a default to move forward. Uh, I'll second I'll it. do it formally. Oh. So, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to approve order number 2023-06 and uh, order number 2023-07. Uh, a motion. I need a second. Second. 
Did you want to say something? I just want to know if there was a way we could get clarification on those couple issues before we move forward. Like, are there, are there vehicles allowed to be parked outside there, or are they not? And is he allowed to have an auction? Because they definitely had so, an auction. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I, he, I, could, I could speak to those. Yeah, two, please, because I, I definitely know that so, there was an added lender at times for an uh, auction. Yes. So uh, there's a letter dated November 23rd, 2021, addressed to in a butter uh, that I spent a significant amount of time researching this uh, this was before I was the town manager. Um, I think it would be of interest to the council and to anybody who is interested in this um, uh, exchange that's just occurred. Uh, but what I can tell you is this. It, it addresses most of these issues. Um, it addresses the, uh, the vehicle issue um, that you raised, Councillor Dunn. Um, vehicles uh, are not permitted um, to be parked um, outside in general. Um, and if I can just read, because I don't yeah. have this fresh in my memory, but I, it's pertinent to your, your question. Um, as we discussed, uh, it, on this particular occasion, a code enforcement officer was not able to substantiate the fire truck being there when he visited the, uh, the property, and it appears it has been removed. A court in, uh, code enforcement officer then spoke to Murray about uh, Murray's about the fire truck. You also provided a picture of a van and a flat, flatbed truck parked in the lot. The van was there uh continuously for a period of time i have driv driven by the property twice during the day and did not make uh those observations however i do not doubt that uh what what your what this resident was telling me was correct um as we discussed documenting violations is challenging because uh oftentimes this would be overnight when the code enforcement officer isn't necessarily working um we sent a letter uh, at this time reminding mr dudek of his obligations under the applicable court order um, and I asked in the future uh, that the resident uh, report these violations directly to the code enforcement officer in real time, which will help us address uh, and enforce this, this provision. Um, the, as far as the barn being grandfathered is concerned, this is a bit of a complex uh, legal analysis, but um, basically uh, the a barn, there was a, as you pointed out, a junkyard operation that was taking place there going back quite, quite a ways. Um, and that was documented in um, litigation between the town and Mr. Dudek. Um, that operation that was taking place out in the open was at, at a certain point in time moved in, indoors into um, a, a barn. Um, there was, uh, there was uh, some consideration given um, at the ZBA to whether this constituted an expansion of a non-conforming use or a grandfathering, um, I think, as you, as you pointed out. Um, and that was uh, discussed by the ZBA. There was legal advice that was given um, from town council. And it was determined that um, even if there had been a non-expansion, um, it was slight and it was um, sort of in natural and in keeping with the existing use of the structure um, and therefore permissible. Um, it was... And, and what I wrote um, uh, on that point in my letter of November uh, of 21 uh, was, instead of outdoor open air junkyard operations, those same operations, that, in other words, the same use, were moved indoors to an improved uh, and more efficient or different instrumentality. That's the language that the cases use to talk about this natural, um, you know, slight expansion. Um, however, the use of the property is the same. Um, that is uh, a natural expansion. Um, and was uh, regarded by the environmental regulators as preferable to conducting those operations um, out, outside. Um, as far as, um, I think the other issue that you raised was the... Um, the auctions. The auctions. Auctions are not permitted here. Um, okay. If, uh, uh, to my knowledge, that's my, my best memory. I don't think I addressed it in this, um, in this letter, uh, but auctions are not permitted here. Um, if somebody has evidence that an auction is taking place, I, I encourage them to report that to the code enforcement yeah. office in the same fashion, um, and that will be looked into. Um, I can also uh, point out uh, to address the council's concerns that um, you know Mr. Mr. Dudek is getting a free ride here. Um, I would like to just uh, like the chairman's indulgence to just read from a letter of December 29th um, that was delivered on behalf of the town to Mr. Dudek. Mr. Dudak, the town has received satisfactory evidence that on December 7th, 2021, the above referenced property was in violation of RSA 236-123, which requires a junkyard to be, quote, substantially screened, close quote. A copy of a photograph documenting the violation is enclosed with this letter. I am aware this violation has recurred uh, periodically over the years. I am also aware that in 2015, the town wrote 
to you, noting the same issue, uh, stating, quote, the town council is aware that this is not the first time uh, that your junkyard has failed to comply. Um, I continued um, to talk about uh, what the penalties were for um, uh, noncompliance with this statute. Um, this shall constitute a written notice of the violation. Please be advised that a daily civil penalty of $275 for the first offense and $500, $550 for a subsequent offense will begin to accrue until this vi violation is rectified should the town commence an enforcement action. Uh, I reminded uh, Mr. Dudek that the burden of complying with the terms of your license, state law, and the court orders entered against you is on you. It is not the town's obligation to remind you of this obligation to comply. Accordingly, please be advised that with respect to re recurring issues in the future, it is the town's intention to address these issues this way. One, there will be no further 30-day notices with opportunity to cure the violation. Two, the town will commence enforcement action. And three, all future violations will be tracked and presented to the town council. Um, additionally, the town has received nu numerous complaints about a vehicle being left out front without a front plate um, overnight. While the town has not at this time substantiated this complaint, you were advised that the front lot is not to be used for storage. I, I say all of that um, just to amplify the, the point that I just made, which is that there are no free rides here. Uh, the town takes this seriously. I have This is my file yeah. on uh, Hall Road. I, know. Um, I have spent uh, dozens of hours on the phone with a local uh, concerned resident. Um, and uh, I think that uh, it sounds like, based on the visits that uh, our code enforcement officer has made, that message has, has been received uh, by the applicant. But all of that is, is what has happened in the past, and uh, I hope that addresses uh, the concerns. It does. The only thing that I can address with my own eyes today is that there was an auction that took place on May 28th at 8.15 a.m. It was a 2028 Subaru. So if Do you know if this auction took place online? I don't know, sir. I just have the picture of the ad. That's all I know. So well, I just didn't yeah, know. We, so we don't know if it took place there. We don't know that it took place online. No. Nobody was there to witness that the auction took place. I just know that he, he put an ad in the paper for it. So We, we could certainly look into that, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, the other thing I would note about the, uh, the, the gentleman from the public raising, um, asking the council if the council is aware that something was filed with a court, but the court doesn't have it. Um, something I'm, I'm here to tell you something was filed with the court uh, so in terms of an enforcement document. Um, and I'm also here to tell you that the court doesn't have it. Uh, it again, I was a prosecutor for four years. Um, uh, the court mis misplaces uh, things that are filed. Uh, that, that happens. Um, and so uh, I can personally attest to the fact that something was filed with the court um, seeking enforcement action. Uh, again, speaking to how, how seriously the town takes this, the court, the, the court lost it. Um, Nobody is, uh, nobody is lying, uh, nobody is corrupt. Um, that's just what happened. Um, and so all of that is to say that uh, Mr. Dudek uh, has, has taken these uh, concerns to heart. It's the council's decision whether to license him or not license him. Um, but I can tell you that the town staff is not shrugging this off um, and takes this uh, just as seriously as, as uh, the residents do. And in addition to that, there is a court order that's been in place almost six years that makes Mr. Dudak comply to every piece of his license and everything. And in accordance with the court order, if he violates it, the court can make the decision to pull his license. We have spent tens of thousands of dollars in legal fees to make sure that Mr. Dudak complies with his license. Tens of thousands of dollars. So anyone who's saying that we're corrupt, taking money on his side, is speaking with fork and tongue. I want to say that to me. Just I, just, I just got those. I just got those couple pieces of information. That's all I had. I don't have anything about anything else. Um, the the point I would emphasize is timely uh, no, notification to the code enforcement department is the only way that these issues can be addressed. Okay. I have a motion on the floor and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Sure, well, it's affirmative license passes.